Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello and welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. Tonight I am happy to welcome to the program Dr. Faith Hensrud, the new president of Bemidji State University and Northwest Technical College. Dr. Hensrud came to Bemidji after spending more than 20 years at the University of Wisconsin Superior, where she served as provost and vice chancellor for academic affairs. As provost, she served as the chief academic and operations officer, managing a $13 million budget and overseeing 130 faculty members, 12 academic departments, and three research centers. In previous roles there, she served as associate vice chancellor for academic affairs and outreach, Director of Distance Education and Continuing Education Programs and Associate Professor. Dr. Hensrud is also a U.S. Army veteran, having served in active duty from 1986 to 1989 and as a member of the U.S. Army Reserve from 1989 to 2000. She retired with the rank of Captain. But for tonight's discussion, we will be focusing on her latest role, President of Bemidji State University and Northwest Technical College. She assumed the position on July 1st and will officially be inaugurated next month. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Bethany. Thanks for joining us. In announcing your hiring, one of the members of the Board of Trustees was quoted as saying this, normally a candidate says she wants to be a president. This candidate said she wants to be president at Bemidji. What was it specifically about this position that appealed to you? You know, I think it, it had a lot of similarities to what I was um, used to in Wisconsin. Um, it was the size of the community that I was looking for, and it was the footprint that the institutions have within the community that really attracted me. Um, so I, I really wanted to be someplace where higher education was a focal point and really made a great impact on the region and the citizens. And Bemidji was really it for me. Fair to say then it wasn't necessarily a huge metropolitan area you were looking at. No, then. definitely <laughs> not. No, um, living in northern Wisconsin and previous to that, um, Upper Michigan, I definitely was not looking for that. <laughs> I like the cities, but I would not want to, to work there. Some of our viewers may be unaware that you not only were a professor at University of Wisconsin Superior, but you also taught classes at Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College, which I, is the two-year yeah. school there. Yes, I did. Yeah, I taught in a supervisory management program there for a number of years. Does it help now as president of both a university and a college to have had experience at both levels in higher education? Yeah, I, I really think it does because you have different student populations that you're serving at both institutions. Um, the technical college tends to focus more on, on individuals who are very focused on a career path. Um, whereas in higher education, sometimes the students are younger and, and they're looking for different options before they decide on what their career path is. So um, a little bit of a difference, but having an experience in both places is really useful. Right. You yourself are a first generation college student, is that correct? That is correct. And I know in recent weeks you've said that one of your focuses is going to be recruiting students to come, more students enrollment, get some enrollment up, but not just more students, but perhaps those who have not been traditionally well served or well Correct. touched with by higher education. Yep, exactly. I, I think in this particular region, we have a real opportunity to connect more with our American Indian student populations and really look at ways that we can help um, to provide opportunities there. Um, so that's really one of the focus areas that I have. And yes, as a first generation college student, I understand what it's like to go to school and not really know what you're getting yourself into and, and then having the support mechanisms at the university and the college to help you. In fact, it, your previous role, you had some experience with increasing specifically American Indian uh, enrollment at your institution, correct? Yes, we actually partnered with the, in, in Wisconsin, it was the Couture Tribal uh, and Community College where we were uh, working on a future Indian teachers grant, so focused on education in, in particular. Oh, cool. Um, obviously with Bemidji's unique location surrounded by reservations, it makes sense to kind of try to tap into some of that. And in fact, recently you met with four presidents yes. of four area tribal colleges. You met with Leech Lake, Red Lake, Fond du Lac, and White Earth. That's correct. Correct? Yes. So tell us a little bit about what the goals was, the goals were of that meeting and what you guys talked about. Yeah, what, what it was initially was just kind of getting to know one another because sure. uh, you know, I was new and, and actually two of the other tribal college presidents were new as well, White Earth and Leech Lake. Okay. And so it was an opportunity for, for us to 
you know, get acquainted and to really talk about where might some opportunities lie. Um, we have partnered um, previously on a grant project that actually funded some technology to go in place at the three tribal colleges and BSU and NTC where we can start to offer some um, courses and potentially some programs together. So really that was the focus, getting to know one another first and then start to think about what are some future opportunities. And that grant, I think uh, I wrote it down, is the Bridge Consortium, right? Yes, Something that's like that. Correct. And it kind of expands their learning opportunities on both ends. That's um, correct. What would be the goal of expanded partnerships? Like, would the goal be to let the tribal college students graduate, perhaps then transfer on to BSU? Yeah, that, I mean, that would be definitely a focus for us. We, um, we followed up with some subsequent visits to two of the tribal colleges so far. We've been up to Red, Red Lake and also to White Earth, oh, cool. where we started to talk a little bit in more detail about what we might do. And again, there's more conversations to be had between uh, leaders at both institutions. But we've talked about things like um, where you have low enrollment courses at any of the institutions, you could offer some things collaboratively. So you have three or four institutions where you have maybe five students at each each campus, um, and now you have a 20 student oh. class. So a, a low enrolling area um, could really be benefited by you know sharing it more widely across the institutions. Fair to say that BSU and NTC would want to complement, not supplant any of the educational opportunities Correct. that are happening at the yeah. tribal colleges. Yeah, exactly. I know uh, in Red Lake they talked a little bit about um, the need for you know some some more advanced courses um, so that it could really supplement some of the the um, earlier courses that students are taking and give them some more variety in their curriculum as well. You've kind of touched on this then in terms of how you can take five from each maybe to get a larger larger class, right. but in what ways can the tribal colleges really benefit BSU? You know, I think one of the things is just developing that relationship and then having the opportunity for students to see um, and experience a class at the university or even the technical college will make them um, more willing to think of BSU as a next transfer point um, for, for their education and not make it seem to be a frightening place, um, but much more comfortable. And the whole idea would be um, actually to allow for some opportunities then um, for transfer and for some shared activities at the institutions. So a lot to explore with it yet. I mean, we're not, sure. we're not totally there, but we're But the really, conversations are happening. The conversations are happening and there's interest on both sides. Awesome. I know that Bill Blackwell, he's the executive director of the American Indian Resource Center on the BSU yes. campus. He was also a part of the meeting. Oh, he was what, instrumental. <laughs> what's his role or the AIR, AIRC's role as these conversations continue? Yeah, he, he really has been kind of one of the, the key leaders in helping to organize these events. Um, we have an, another meeting scheduled for Leech Lake and another one for Fond du Lac coming up in October. And um, so he makes all of the arrangements for us and, and he's kind of, you know, open, opens the door and um, has really some knowledge, having been here over a year, um, of what types of conversations have taken place in, in the partnership and what some of the opportunities are. So him being in the middle of those conversations is very useful because he can share that information as well. And, um, and we're just really excited to, to have his continued work. Obviously, student support is what it's all about when we do get the students here at BSU, and the AIRC is really a key piece of that. So they help support the students when they're on campus, they have a place to That's go correct. to if they need assistance. Yeah, a very welcoming environment for students who oh, okay. you know, would, would be coming from, from their own home location um, to our campus. Well, obviously the Indian reservations are a unique aspect of BSU, but there's others as well. Um, we've seen in recent years, for example, the university has really tapped into that natural resource component, which you've seen with the growth of its relatively new wildlife biology program. Yes. How important is it for a university or for a college to really find its unique attributes and really tap into that? Yeah, I think, you know, for, for an institution in this particular portion of the country, um, portion of the state, I mean, the natural environment is, is really um, a key factor in everything that we do. And so a focus on, on biology, focus on sustainability, um, and then connecting those particular um, disciplines to our region, I think are, is really critical. So we're really thinking about, um, from a sustainability standpoint, tying into some of the native um, culture as well uh, and their focus on sustainability. Um, so that would be another piece um, that would, again, be a collaborative piece, but, um, but we definitely are looking at, you know, how do we expand our programming there? 
And as you really kind of start to define and embrace perhaps those those unique niches that you can serve, yep. does that help increase enrollment then? I mean, is that really kind oh, of yeah. a way to tap into students? Yeah, you know, we, we are constantly thinking about how do we um, attract more students to the area. Um, retaining students is also another opportunity for us because you can certainly recruit students, but um, if you're not you know, putting forth a really solid effort for ensuring that they're successful, then it will be much more challenging. But um, we're always looking for opportunities that we can consider when it comes to new program ideas. And I think the faculty um, at both BSU and NTC are really um, interested in ways that we can um, become more of a, a place of first choice for students. You know, we talk about increasing enrollment, and actually BSU is increasing nominally. I mean, it's going up yes. a little bit. Are there target figures in terms of where the ideal enrollment should be at? BSU is kind of around that 5,000 undergrad, 300 grad. Yep. NTC, I think, is around 1,100, give yeah. or take. Yeah, uh, NTC is a bit down, I have to say, this year. And so we're, we're really looking at where are some program areas and what are some marketing um, ideas that we need to implement so that we can better um, promote the programs that we have. Um, at NTC, I, you know, a, a, an increase in enrollment, whether it's 1%, 2%, or 3%, would be most advantageous because then you can start looking at investing in programs um, rather than looking at um, making any reductions. So for both institutions, um, expanding our, our population of students is really a critical piece. We offer both online and face-to-face, -face, and so it does provide more opportunities for students who are place-bound and wouldn't necessarily be able to come to campus. I want to touch on something you just said just a few minutes ago, but it's not just about bringing the new students here. It's about supporting the ones who are here so they yep. not only succeed, but they thrive and they finish their degrees. Right. Um, you've talked about some coaching initiatives, um, some perhaps some uh, opportunities there. Yes. Could you tell us a little yeah, bit about that? Yeah, we, we have quite a few different things going on. Um, with One is a Beaver Success Program where we're really looking at um, helping students as they're, they're coming into the institution to make sure that they're connected with faculty and staff. Um, and one of the things that you, you understand in higher education is those connections are really critical. And having a student have develop a relationship with whether it's a staff member or a faculty member in their discipline really helps them to feel more a part of the institution and that they have the support that they're needing um, when they're coming from an, a community outside of this area. So it's really looking at, at what types of activities that we can promote that will allow for that um, and, and to help them succeed and to feel that support. Is there a difference then between the success coaching versus advisement? Like how do they kind of differ from each other? Yeah, I think advising is really focused on what is it that you're needing for your career path. And so faculty advisors are very much involved in talking with students about, okay, what is it that you want to accomplish with your education? And then how might you best have experiences here in the university to help you, you do that? Whether it's through the coursework that you take or internships or other um, paid employment opportunities, uh, I think there's a variety of things that, that go into that type of planning with students. But then you also have students who are having a little bit of a challenge here and there, and they might not necessarily know where to turn, um, but if you have a success coach, you can have an individual who you can say, well, this isn't really a, about academics, but I really don't understand how I can get help with, and you name the topic, and they have somebody that they can turn to, and, and that person can help um, connect them with the right office so, they, so that they can get the support that they need. It happens on the faculty advisor side as well, but I think just having another person that they can go to um, is just really advantageous. You can never have too many people to help That's you along correct. the way. That's correct. Um, this predates, predates you a little bit, but a few years ago, you know, NTC really went through that reimagining campaign, really yep. took a hard look at itself, um, through which NTC and BSU became further aligned yes. seamlessly in some ways. Um, you've worked at both levels, obviously, in terms of the university and the college. How do they serve those unique needs? How important is it that they really know their identities? Yeah, I, I think it's really critical, and I, I think our accrediting agency believes it's critical as well. Um, but one of the things that, that I need to understand better is what has happened successfully with the uh, alignment 
and, and what has not worked so well. Okay. And um, one of the things that I heard early on when I, when I was still in the interview phase for the position was that um, it's difficult for students at the technical college to be able to transfer um, to other institutions, oh, okay. and even in some cases to, to Bemidji State. And so that's one of the things that I'll be asking my, my two academic leaders at the two institutions to look at are what do we need to do to help these students who are interested in continuing on with their education at a four-year institution so that Bemidji State becomes, again, their first choice um, rather than looking at other institutions. Northwest Technical College has really kind of become, in recent years, one of those places you can go and see some community collaborations in action. Yep. You know, you've got adult, adult basic education is now on site. Yep. NTC plays a pretty key role in the Minnesota Institute. Innovation Institute, MI3, which is kind of like a manufacturing right. program. And then Bemidji High School itself actually has classes there through like mechatronics and stuff. Yes. Um, do you expect that these type of collaborations will continue, first of all, and then do you think such things would expand? Yeah, I, th I think we need to always be looking for ways that we can better collaborate within our community. And again, that's one of the key areas that I've talked about that I need to understand better. Um, where are we doing this well? and where are we not necessarily meeting the needs of the businesses within our region? And so having some dialogue and conversations with businesses, um, looking at a, a recent um, Nielsen, um, Nielsen Foundation study that was completed to say, okay, how do we do this better? First of all, within our community, but then looking out into the region as well. Um, so again, yeah, lots to mm -hmm. work on there. We've heard time and time again, as I'm sure you have since you've come, that while Bemidji is growing, employers say that one of their top concerns is they can't find the skilled workers to still to fill their needed positions. Correct. So as those conversations continue, is that something you'd be looking into, is how NTC fits into that role? Yeah, okay. yeah. and with, with a technical college, you have some you're, you're a bit more nimble, and you can look at ways that you can either through your customized training operations meet those needs, or you can also look at, okay, what might we do as far as starting a program or redesigning our program, redesigning the curriculum so it will better meet the needs of the industry. And so having those conversations and having uh, advisory boards for each of the programs is a really critical piece to that, and um, getting that feedback and then saying, okay, how might we do this differently? NTC has also got some new leadership, not in addition to you, obviously, but also um, Bob Griggs has left for a different yes. position. So yes, tell us yes. a little bit about what's happening now with the, with the hierarchy there. Yeah, so we have a, a new um, academic dean. Our chief academic officer is the dean of the technical college, and Paula Langto has joined us actually just this week. On Monday, uh, she started her first day, and she brings a lot of experience with her from both the technical college and the um, two-year college system in Wisconsin. She was at, at both types of institutions and has really had um, some great successes there with increasing enrollments um, at her previous institution and also with um, looking at new program ideas and, and again, looking for strategies to meet, meet the community and workforce needs. One of the things you did when you first came to Bemidji was you held some listening sessions um, with community groups and different like that. What were you just seeking to learn more about the community and what they needed, or what was it you were really seeking to learn, and what did you hear? Yeah, and I'm, I'm still in the process of that and, and actually have not done as much of that as I'd like. Um, a lot of my time is spent on campus right now understanding the programs, sure. and then the next piece will really be to, to be focusing on some sector meetings okay. so that we can have folks in the healthcare sector come together, folks in manufacturing come together and, and say, you know, here's what we would like to see from the two institutions. And then we can go back and, and start talking, you know, obviously faculty would be involved in these conversations as well, but really start talking about, okay, is there a way for us to provide that particular support or is there a way for us to partner with another institution in the Minnesota State system to provide that. So uh, I think the key is when you're an institution of higher education in your region, you should be the, the first place that folks go to when they're looking for that particular need. And then you work out some strategies and partnerships to be able to provide it. It seems like in recent years that Bemidji has really kind of taken this community effort to 
to give her the kind of silos. You're not just the university. It's not just the civic yeah. groups. It's not just healthcare. Everybody's come together. Have you kind of experienced that? Have you seen it since you've come here that everyone's reaching out, saying hi, they want to get to know you yeah. and start talking? Yeah, I have to say it's been a very welcoming environment. Um, I sit on the Greater Bemidji Board, and I mean, there's definitely a mixture of folks from all all um, different uh, businesses there, and that's really helpful to have those connections right away. Um, I think wherever you go, um, you find people that are just willing and interested in, in saying, um, let's talk, let's have coffee, let's, let's um, you know, figure out how we can work together. Building bridges outside of the institution itself can't be new. I mean, you must have done similar kind of ventures before. How will that help you here? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what I've talked about before, it's all about those relationships and getting to know people and them getting to know you and um, understanding, again, what one another is, is needing. Um, so, yeah, I would say some of my past experiences will, will definitely benefit me because I'm very much used to um, engaging with a variety of, of people and thinking about strategies. This also predates your arrival a little bit, but Bemidji State concluded its $35 million Imagine Tomorrow yes. campaign. Yep. Um, brought in, I think it doubled the scholarships or brought in many more scholarships. Yes. What was that, I mean, as you're looking at the position considering a possible move, does that tell you something about the movement of where the university is headed? Yeah, it, it's really amazing from what I've learned. I mean, they brought in over $35 million in, in, in funds for the institution and they really did that um, it was the first time that they ever had such a, a campaign in the institution's history, and to have been that successful is really quite amazing. Um, they're going to be celebrating that success in October, so it will be fun to see um, a lot of the folks that made that happen. You know, obviously President Hansen and, and Rob Bollinger were key, um, as well as the foundation staff and, and, and the board members. How do you continue that momentum? Like, how do you keep it? Like, okay, great, we did this huge thing. How do you kind of keep that going? Yeah, I, I think for me, it's really connecting. It's connecting with, with the individuals who are part of that and understanding what they did um, to make that successful, but then to also start strategizing about, okay, how do we reach out to the, the folks that have not contributed and, and where do we find some new opportunities here? Um, we talked about this. It's going to be celebrated on October 14th um, next yep. month for homecoming. Yes. Um, as a part of that, you'll be inaugurated as the 11th president That's at correct. BSU. That so is correct. I know it's kind of a ceremonial. Obviously, you've had the job since July. Right. Yeah. But you know, what does it mean to actually go through the inauguration to actually, you know, say? All right, yeah, this is it. it's it, it kind of makes it official. I mean, yes, I started on on July 1st, but it it really is an opportunity. I see it as to really celebrate the institutions. Um, so we'll be having a, a formal event um, where you have the regalia and um, the chancellor will come from, from uh, St. Paul and, and do an investiture ceremony where I'll be given the oath of office as I understand it and, and the chain of office which is um, a medallion that each of the presidents wear that has the names and the dates of the, the previous presidents on it and oh, you wear that at all of your official events like uh, commencement. So oh, yeah, so I think it's, you know, I really see it as celebrating the two institutions and the good work that our faculty and our students are doing here. Looking even further, further ahead, BSU is going to celebrate its centennial in 2019. That's correct, yes. That's got to be a great chance to not only celebrate the past and how far you've come, yep. but also really take stock of the future. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's such a tremendous opportunity as a new president coming in to say that while we get to plan and celebrate that particular milestone in the institution's history. So we've already started to have, you know, some conversations about, oh yeah, this has got to be a really neat event and um, we'll be putting something together for that. So more to come on it. <laughs> uh, we talked about listening sessions with communities, with different groups. Yep. The real heart of the institutions are really the students. They've been back on campus now for a month and a half, yep. give or take. That's correct. What have you heard? How has it been? Yeah, you know, it's so much fun to see the excitement of the students when, when they're on campus. I mean, it, the trepidation of the freshmen, you know, that are, that are just coming there for the first time, but the, uh, the excitement of those students that have been there for quite some time. And, and to get um, your different student groups together and to see a lot of activities, it's really quite, quite exciting. Um, I'm really pleased with the work of the, the campus life staff 
in particular when it comes to the different activities. I, I was there for campus move-in and got to meet the parents who were dropping off their new student for the first time and I had done that with my own two kids so I understand what that's like. And um, just to see the teamwork of all of the athletic teams coming to help unload the cars and the comments of the, the, the parents saying, oh my goodness, this was the smoothest move-in that I've ever been to. So, I mean, it, it is really exciting to see everybody back together and um, working with the faculty and staff in the classrooms. Have you had a chance to talk with students about what they would like to see improved or anything that they kind of want to give some feedback on in terms of the two institutions? Yeah, I, I have a, uh, actually a group of students that President Hansen had started previously, and actually it might have been even President Quiskard that started this. It's called the President Student Commission. So I have a group of 15 students that I meet with on a monthly basis, and we actually do some focus on leadership development, on their own leadership development, but then also um, talk about what would you like to see different in the community or in the institution? And we had our first meeting just within the last week, um, so we've not gotten into that sure. quite yet, but um, it was really um, interesting just to hear their preliminary thoughts about them wanting to make an impact on the institution and, and how they, they'll have a culminating project, and so um, they're beginning to think about what that might be and where they can make a difference. So it's, that's going to be really fun That'd for me be because, you know, as a president, you don't get to teach classes <laughs> usually. So it's not really a class, but yet it's a group of students who are really focused on, on their own development, plus um, looking at how they can make a difference. We're really kind of reaching the end here, but I did want to ask, it had to be hard to leave, you know, University of Wisconsin-Superior, where you'd been for 20-some years, yeah. you know, but... Are you settling in well to Bemidji? Are you enjoying it? Does this start to feel like home? It, it definitely does. I actually spent um, last Friday down in St. Paul and then I was in Brainerd for a couple of system meetings on Monday and Tuesday of this week. And when I drove back on Tuesday night um, into Bemidji, I said, this, this really feels like home. So it was, it was a good feeling. Um, you know, you sell the house in Wisconsin and, and that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I like the community. It feels, um, very comfortable to me and I, I'm, I'm really excited about being here. Well, we're so excited you could join us tonight. Thank you for talking with us. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. I hope you've learned more about Bemidji State University, more about Northwest Technical College, and more about where it's headed into the future. Join me next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.